Hello everyone, this is Keith UOPC, and welcome to my proto-commentary of a match between just sort of a, uh, a mix-up of an assortment of very high caliber players. I will introduce them individually after they have chosen which heroes they are playing as. Right now it's the pick and ban process. The Sentinel first bans the Invoker because they do not want the Scourge to pick him right off the bat. Scourge bans the Pugna, who is another very strong first pick hero. We also see the AA, who is a very powerful hero. His, uh, the short cooldown on his ultimate is one of the main reasons so powerful in team fights. He can often, uh, sometimes he can hit the enemy heroes if they go for a push sort of far away. He can hit them at a distance and then hit them again closer, which is always very annoying. As well as the Weaver, her, even though the fate time on her invisibility was nerfed a while ago, she is just still so annoying. The Scourge first picks the Doom, which is always, I always love to see what, how people react to first pick Doom, because a lot of people say, oh, dur, Doom counters everyone. Well, that's garbage. Doom counters some people much stronger than other people. He doesn't counter everyone equally. He counters heroes like a, a Lion or a Storm Spirit much stronger than, say, an Earthshaker, because the if he Dooms a Lion, then that pretty much shuts up the Lion, but the Earthshaker, by contrast, is probably just going to be hanging back, looking to a Fisher, and not as much else. So the, the Scourge also picks up the Morphling, a very strong carry. But uh, one thing about the Morphling is he really wants to farm from all three lanes. So the rest of your team, you can't really pick heroes that also want to farm the lanes in the in the mid-late game. Obviously, they can still farm the game early game, because Morphling's just going to be sitting in one game early game. But in the mid-slash-late game, he's going to be wanting to farm multiple lanes. They also pick up a Ventral Spirit, who is a fantastic support for a strong DPS type carry and just strong hero in general. Um, the Sent Sentinel bans the Windrunner, who I think is a good choice. Good Windrunner is a hero that needs no farm or even she can just be a pure support role and be effective, especially with a, a Morphling on her team. She's, I think, a great hero to synergize with the Morphling. Storm Spirit's another one who I love to see with the Morphling because he's so good with just a small amount of farm to pick off the enemy supports and even do a lot of damage to their carry heroes while letting the Morphling get all the farm on his team. So we'll see who they, <coughs> excuse me, pick to, uh, I guess they're going to be sending their Doom solo mid probably. They still need to solo the long lane. It's not going to be the Bat Rider. Um, okay, they picked the Broodmother to solo the, the harder lane, which is a good choice. And I'm not sure who the Sentinel is going to pick to lane against the Broodmother. It's... That's the thing about, there are some heroes who are much better at laying against the Broodmother than other heroes. One, I, I really like Windrunner laying against the Broodmother, just because he tries to push with the spy rights. Uh-uh, ain't gonna happen. As well as her power shot can often just hit him while he's in the invisible webs very effectively. So they are, I'm not sure who, they have the, the Bout Riders probably their solo top, the Nevermore is their solo mid, the Shaker roaming, they still need one more hero to pick to go up against the, the Broodmother in all probability. Whereas the Scourge, they have the Morphling probably trilaning with the Venge, probably one more support or Roamer, uh, maybe a jungle I've seen Enchantress, no, um, they pick Enigma. I thought uh, that Enchantress had become the more sort of popular jungler, but Enigma very similar in that role, he's a uh, he can be very powerful in team fights, but sort of hit or miss. Sometimes his ultimate is just totally game breaking in a team fight, whereas sometimes it just psh, does nothing. Um, they do have the Earthshaker with his long range Fisher to interrupt the ultimate, which can be very effective, as well as Lasso, which can go through a BKB ultimate. So S Sentinel does have a couple options to deal with the Enigma, which isn't to say that the Enigma will not be effective, he can still be very effective. I guess the Scylla Bear is going to be bottom lane against the Broodmother, which is a bit interesting. One thing I sort of like to see laning when you know you have to deal with a Broodmother, one thing I like is uh, heroes with faster attack animations, because the faster attack animation lets you get off that harass when Broodmother pops out of her web before she goes invisible again. Sometimes heroes that are a bit slower just can't get hit off. Um, Venomancer and Scylla Bear, they're I, they're fast, but they're not the fastest. They're not the uh, the fastest guns on the wild wild west, but they're certainly a heck of a lot better than the the drow rangers of the world. I'll give them that. Okie doke. So we have Morphling looks to be trialing with his, or not not so much trialing as he has got the bench to back him up. She might be doing a bit of creep pulls while the Enigma just neutrals camps elsewhere. The Doom, Doom's a strong hero, but solo mid against Nevermore, he might have a few problems because his lack of armor means that he is very vulnerable to right-click harassment, which is something that 
Nevermore is fairly strong, not initially of course, his base damage is pitiful, but once he gets the uh, the souls, he starts building up his souls, he can do pretty significant right click damage. So he may be able to drive Lucifer out of the lane once he gets say level 5 or so, but on the flip side, Lucifer once he gets level 5, uh, once Nevermore is level 5, Lucifer's level death will be highly effective against him. And uh, with it's very easy to, someone comes in with a gank to help get a kill once Lucifer is level 5 death the bonus damage very easy for just avenge stun or anything to pick up the kill and so the action is commencing the pieces are on the board they're all set up to play we'll see how it turns out I think uh, if I'm my early game prediction I like Scourge's lineup a little bit more I think the Morphling, uh, Morphling Broodmother really ensures them to be very strong in the late game the uh, the Enigma can be ensure that they won't lose any team fights early game, I don't think. As well as the Venge is a very great support throughout. I think what we're going to need to see for the Sentinel to win this is uh, some good rolling from the Earthshaker. I almost always say that. I'm personally very prejudiced against the Earthshaker. Sometimes he can be effective, but other times just not so much. And He's not bad, but sometimes I feel he just doesn't contribute enough. So I'm going to be looking for Earthshaker to be saving getting a lot of kills as well as saving his allies with some good fishers, some defensive and offensive fishers. The Bat Rider's going to have a hard time early game. We're going to see if he can transition out of his the hard early game from this trialing he's going up against to be somewhat more effective later on. It's never more being very aggressive with right clicks, almost up in the tower range, but uh, he's also getting a few last hits there as well. So, sorry, I just got the tail end of that, but there was a a gank from the, not so much a gank, but the Morphling and the Venge went in for a kill on the Batrider. However, Earthshaker laid down a Pro Fisher, which saved Batrider's life. So I think uh, the Batrider would have been the victim of first blood had Earthshaker not been there to lay down the Fisher. So, so far, good roaming from the Earthshaker. He, that's what he needs to do. He is, it's not easy. I mean, that's one of the things about Earthshaker roaming. It's, it's very difficult to be in the right place at the wrong time. It's not only a matter of map awareness and skill, but frankly, a lot of luck. Sometimes you just you need to be there and sometimes you're not and it can, it can be challenging. And it's not always it's not always just poor play when it doesn't work out for a shaker. Sometimes it's just bad luck. Which is one of the reasons I don't like him so much. So he's going in for a Fisher probably on this loose fur combined with the Venomancer in the woods should be enough for a first flood. We will see Lucifer is already fairly low health. He's only at five hundred health. They're painting like mad. Kill him Air Shaker says. Kill him, kill him, kill him. Actually, after this, I really need to introduce the players because I said I was going to do that. And I totally lied and didn't. So we see this loose. The Venomancer is taking hits from the tower, actually. So the Venomancer is taking hits from the tower. She does die first. This Earthshaker is taking some hits from the tower as well. Taking some names, and I really need to introduce these players. I apologize. So we have Babyface, aka Baby Nate, on the Earthshaker. We have um, Pig of Pain on the Venomancer. We have Daniel on the Bat. We have CKK on the Scylla Bear. We have Hey Abusa. Hey Abuse AK Nada on the Nevermore, Tang on the Baroon, Fiend on the Lucy, uh, I'm not sure who Dot Tilda is on the, the Enigma, I have to apologize, I believe it's Yao PIS, I think that's Yao, so I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure, and just, just plain shit on the, the Vengeful Spirit. So sorry for not doing that earlier, but as you can see, there are some very high skill players in this game, which is one of the reasons I choose it. Obviously, I don't pick games with total noobs, because I play those all the time, and I don't know, I, it's painful enough to play with noobs, casting a game with them would probably be even worse. So we see an attempt to kill going in on this bat rider. We do have the Enigma here, and just barely Morphling gets the, the, the last hit on the kill. I was worried that Morphling would pick up the last hit on the kill. This uh, Broodmother's been taking quite a bit of damage, and we do see a Sentry Ward drop, and combined with the Venomancer slow, that is probably going to be enough for a kill, because Syllabair is so fast early game. Or well, not just the early game, throughout the game. However, Syllabair's bear don't die. Okay, he, he recasts his bear just for the last second. I think it would have died, which would have done unnecessary damage to him. So one thing I'm going to apologize for is the fact that this game is not saved by an observer, which is always sad because I cannot give the, the detailed information about the creep stats. However, I can assure you that Morphling and Nevermore are both getting quite a bit of firemen. Nevermore is up against Lucer, who is not really able to put as much pressure as he would like on him. Um, we see the Vengeful Spirit is chillaxing to the Maxon, but she's been spotted by the Earthshaker, paying great map awareness from the roaming Earthshaker 
to ensure that his Nevermore is not caught out of position and owned. So the uh, Enigma continue to fire him up to neutrals. He just sends himself a whole care package of items. Meanwhile, this Nevermore. I always uh, just because Nevermore's white on the mini map, plus he's black. He, I always feel that he's a scourge hero just because his colors look so scourgy. But I want to keep reminding myself he's suddenly so he does get a hit by the level death from the Lucifer, which is at the level where it does extra damage. And we see a stun from the Venge, perhaps. No, the Earthshaker stun goes off. Which probably saves Nevermore's life. I'm, I think he might have been far away enough to be okay, but a, a very strong defensive fisher, anyways. We see Broodmother going in from the kill on the Scylla Bear, who was tanked some tower hits sort of unnecessarily. However, he does have his bear. He, he can juke around all day long, combined with his bear, it means the Broodmother is just going to take a lot of damage and not be able to get the kill. So this Nevermore took a bit more damage, probably from another level death of Lucifer. We see the Morphling continuing to farm up in the top lane, while the Bat Riders. Just waiting, patiently waiting, hoping that he can hit level 6 and get a kill with Lassu at level 6. Enigma is farming fairly well for just being a sort of neutral farmer type guy. The Venge is more or less roaming because she doesn't think that Morphling needs the, the support. Uh, I'm not entirely fond of the way Morphling and Venge are playing the lane. Y you can often with two heroes play the lane aggressively denying creeps back here while having your support back here to deny the bat rider any experience at all. Whereas they're they are letting the bat rider get some experience. Excuse me, Broodmother is in some trouble as they are going for a kill. Let's we'll see if they drop another ward. Uh, no, they didn't drop another ward. He's at 21, 15, 12, 9, 7, 7 life, but he lives. Just barely, skin of his teeth. So, uh, a bit of a luck for the, the Broodmother there, which is fortunate because he's already died once before. Another death really would have been trouble. However, the, the Scourge, the, I didn't really, I should have realized this before, but Venomancer combined with Scylla Bear, very strong pushing power against just a solo Broodmother because once they drive the Broodmother away like they did there, they are just free to take this tower quite easily. Earthshaker is invisible. The Lucifer is here as well. Come out with Nevermore and the Enigma. We'll see if Enigma goes down to a couple of raises and a Fisher. He's low health, so yep, just one Fisher and a raise is enough. And they also managed to damage the Lucifer at the same time. So very nice play there. So the Silver is doing a bit of jungling while the Broodmother pushes back with his her spider rights. Um, Nevermore is saying BKB. I don't know if it's saying he's playing on going it or someone else's. I'm not sure what that means. But uh, Earthshaker laying against his Nevermore. No problem, no problem. He's very confident. And he does have this Nevermore here for a couple raises. No, Nevermore does not even try for the raises. Doom has gone off on this Earthshaker. He is probably going to be okay though. This uh, Enigma is coming in with his Eidolons to do some heavy damage. However, Enig or, sorry, excuse me, Nevermore just farms those Eidolons like nobody's business. You have to be careful with the Eidolons. They have so little health these days. They're, they're sort of uh, very strangely balanced in that their, their damage is ridiculously high, but their health is so low that against anyone with any sort of AoE nukes, like in particular Nevermore, who is pretty much the AoE nuke king, they, they can just be a very easy way to hand gold to the enemy team. Silabear at low health. We'll see if this uh, this, this Brew Mother does not have boots yet, whereas Silabear has two boots. He's got one on each foot, going to give one of those to his bear, no doubt. The Brew Mother doing some new crafts. I'm going to keep an eye on Silabear, just because he's all alone. His Venomancer isn't there to back him up, and Brew Mother's a very dangerous hero to be alone against. But Silabear is so high health, I think he should be fine. Uh, okay, he's just. Broodmother is continuing to nuke him slowly but surely. I'm gonna just try to make sure he doesn't get nuked again. Because if he does, Broodmother may go for the kill. Because I would take him down to like 250 health. But meanwhile, we see a lot of action middle lane. We have a whole bunch of heroes here. A great Fisher from the Earthshaker goes off while Lucifer is being hit by the tower. So Lucifer takes enormous damage from the tower. The Enigma is going in with the ult, which gets two heroes, but does not get the Enigma. And Enigma is getting hit by the tower a whole bunch. So he falls down. Unfortunately for him, so very uh, poor from the the Scourge team there. And the Silabear, okay, he's been nuked by the, the Venmancer one last, uh, sorry, the Broodmother one last time, but however, he returns his bear to him, but the Spire Lights are continuing to harass him. They're slowing him, doing small, gradual amounts of damage. He sort of gets blocked by his own bear, which is unfortunate. And Broodmother gets off one final nuke. 
So, Broodmother finally picks off a kill on the, the Silver, who's kind of been manly handling her a little bit. We have Earthshaker hiding in the trees. Well, Morphling is leaning against this Batrider, who's finally managed to get levels up on. Remember, Batrider was behind levels. He's managed to switch around, and he is now ahead levels. I'm not entirely sure how that happened. Maybe he picked off a few neutral camps, I'm not sure. So, uh, Ventral Spirit going for a kill on this Nevermore, however. The Earthshaker is here with the defensive Fisher, however. Doom has doomed the Nevermore. He's he now going to kill Nevermore. However, Nevermore is trying to kill the Venge. Venge is being hit by this range creep. Oh my goodness. So he tried to go for the kill on the range creep, but he does not quite get it. We see Broodmother is going behind the tower, so between the tower action. There is a Syllabair right here. They may go in for a little bit of a fight. So this is a... Silver does drop his ward, so we can see the brute mother. Brute mother gets hit by the tower, and so Silver has a ward here, which will continue to be useful. So I'm gonna keep an eye on this brute mother and the Silver because they look like they are going at it. Two melee heroes just duking it out, and brute mother has the advantage that she does have a nuke. However, Silver has his bear, so it's the battle of the the very powerful bear ally versus the nuking ability of the brute mother. Let me check. Brute mother is out of mana though, so she has to be careful now that she has no more mana. And she actually, no more mana, she's a soul ring. I don't know what I'm talking about. She pops her soul ring to go in for another kill. And, oh, very entangled, that's the thing, I mean. People say lucky entangle, and yes, it is lucky that that's an entangle, but you keep taking risks and you keep venturing out against that syllabaire, and sooner or later he will get that entangle off. There's a difference between the lucky entangle and the eventual entangle. And I think that was the eventual entangle. Broodmother kept messing around with the bear, and eventually it will entangle you. So uh, I think Broodmother just playing a little too aggressively. Should have been a bit more content to just do a bit more passive, try and farm up for BKB and then be aggressive, perhaps. So I'm not liking the Brute Mother's play too much. I mean, it's, it's, it's not miserable, but I think uh, she should have been a bit more defensive slash passive slash relying on her strength in the late game combined with the Morphling strength in the late game. I don't think she really needs to put so much pressure on the Syllabair as she is. So Earthshaker gets off of Fisher, which does a lot of damage to the Morphling, forces him to back off. However, he has very low health. The Morphling may go in for a kill on him. The Batrider is doing a kill on the Enigma. He has a Blink Dagger. And this tower is in deny range, so no doubt going to be denied. Oh shit. I missed a kill on the the brute mother he manages to get a kill off on the Zeb the Syllabair. Come on with the help of his Doombringer ally. So uh that's good for the Morphling. After feeding a little bit too much of Syllabair, he's managed to regain sort of control in the lane. There's the tower deny goes off and eventually it was in deny range. The Morphling very low health, running away like a coward. And so some more farming going up. So I'm surprised that Broodmother has not managed to push her lane yet. Um, the the Nevermore managed to push mid tower. Um, so we see the Spiderites just trying to farm in the woods. Meanwhile, Venomance are doing some woods farming herself with the wards, and no doubt going to shut down the Spiderite farm. So very good play by I think Venomance here shutting down the Spiderite farm. If you just <coughs> excuse me. If you allow Broodmother to farm the woods, you're probably going to pay for it, but Broodmother now going for a kill on her. She is so fast. She has boots, so does Animancer, but Broodmother's ward just make him so fast. And a nuke, but we have Earthshaker here for the Pro Fisher. Oh, the Fisher isn't a block off. It's, well, it's a block off either way, but a block's the same. Venomancer being very aggressive. Broodmother can pop Soaring and use another nuke. Uh, but she's very low health. She does use the Soul Ring to get the nuke, which gets a kill. However, Earthshaker Fisher, no doubt. A couple more seconds. Yes, there it is. So that was not a good trade for Broodmother. He is again being very aggressive. I mean, shut down by the effective roaming play of the Earthshaker. I'm going to compliment Earthshaker. I often worry about how much Earthshaker can contribute, but I think this is a strong Earthshaker game. So, congrats to Babyface on his Earthshaker play. So Sun, or excuse me, Scourge going for a push on the middle tower. We do have the Earthshaker. Earthshaker is everywhere. So he is here to get off a defensive Fisher, which is just going to delay their push a little bit. Might delay it enough for his backup allies to come. We have this uh, Nevermore comes in with some raises. The Venomancer is here, and we'll see if Venomancer gets an alt off before she dies. She does get the alt off. She does die. So this Morphling is, he's already waveformed. He is very dangerous low health. We see the Bat Rider going in for a kill on the Enigma thanks to his Blink Dagger. He can pull that sort of crazy shit off. But he has very low health. He is getting killed by the Waveform. Loose for running away at very low health. Um, who is. Oh, that's uh, the Nevermore's ultimate picks off a kill on the Ventral Spirit. 
Morphling Verlo Health. Earthshaker has plenty of mana for two more fishers. There's one more fisher. Ur Earthshaker still has enough mana for another fisher. We have Morphling can waveform away, however. He, where can he waveform to is the problem. There's really nowhere for him to run. We see the silver coming around the corner, and hello, bam, in the face. And uh, getting hit in the face by some sort of really ugly bear. And I'm just going to stress how ugly silly bear, silly bear is. Man, he is one messed up bear. If I saw a bear like that at the zoo, I might have just said, Come on, guys, put this bear out of its misery. It is such an ugly mofo. You should just kill it. Poor bear. But uh, not going to happen anytime soon in this game, because still a bear, not an easy bear to kill. His ultimate gives him Imba health. He has 1,200 health. This uh, <laughs> poor broodmother is trying to do all she can against the Scylla bear. However, her ring is just not enough. She can harass him, harass him, harass him, but it seems he is always still there. We do see the Earthshaker coming in to back up this Scylla bear in the woods. Start farming quite safely. Spide Rice just chilling. The Venomancer going for a push on the tower. Someone. Morphling, I think that's Morphling. Uh, yes, Morphling coming in to deny that push. So, uh, let me check the Heroes all count. So, 11 to 9, very even game so far. Uh, I still feel that Scourge has a bit of a late game advantage. However, Central has picked up the early game advantage with the uh, strong hero kill counts. They pick off a, a kill on the Broodmother there with the Fisher combined with some raises. Very nicely played. And they had a, a Sentry Ward right there. They did not particularly need it, but it was there. So, well played. The Vent, or excuse me, the, the Doom, I haven't seen him. <laughs> eat any creeps. I'm not sure what he's eaten. He must have something in his mouth. He eats... Th th I think those ones are mana burn? Strange choice. I'm not sure if he's ever going to use that or if he's just using it for the gold. So we see a hasted bat rider is teleporting over here um, to back up the Venomancer. There is an enigma in the woods and a ventral spirit not far behind. But the bat rider is very strong. The Venomancer's ultimate is off cooldown. He does pop the ultimate. So we'll see the Batrider laying down some stacks before Firefly, and now there's the Firefly to pick off the Enigma. However, the, the Venomance are still alive, thank goodness. And the Batrider going for another kill on this Morphling. I'm not sure if he can get it or not. A bit of a bad swap there because it swaps him out of the range of the Morphling, but the Batrider still dies. So Batrider trying to be very aggressive with Morphling. However, they are outnumbered just a bit too much. However, because they were outnumbered, which this broodmother is just a crazy baller. She knows that Morphling, or excuse me, she knows that Earthshaker and Nevermore are right there. She's just going for it. And she is dodging raises and fishers. She's just not there. She kills the trees very effectively. And Nevermore is doing some stuns. Nevermore has a BKB and not enough to save the life of his ally and now that his BKB is almost out he is being ulted by the name which goes through BKB anyways very strong right click power of the excuse me the broodmother is enough to finish off the kill on him so the the scourge taking revenge on the bottom lane so uh, that uh, yeah the scourge they were down 11 and 9 moments ago now it's 13 all so the action in the top lane come on with the action. Very favorable turn events for the Scourge. And let me just check the farm on all these heroes. See if there's anything really uh, worth noting. Um, so Lucy has his Vanguard. Morphling. BKB. Biggest thing is Nevermore does in fact have his BKB. And are they finally going to push this tower? Holy smokes. You would think that... With an Enigma and with a Broodmother, they would be able to push this tower, but oh my goodness, the Batrider just eating all this for breakfast with his Firefly. He can just chomp on that all day long. He does have an Evermore, he, or excuse me, Earthshaker here. Earthshaker gets off the blocking Fisher effectively. The, the Broodmother is trying for the kill. We do have the Ventral Spirit here who stuns the Batrider. Batrider in a lot of trouble. He gets an ultimate off but promptly dies. Now this Earthshaker all alone at the tower. He is getting some fishers off. He really needs someone to come in and help him. Like this Nevermore is somewhat close. The Okay, it looks like he's going to live there. Not going to dive him at the tower. I think they perhaps could have. Oh, shit, this was a... a I thought that was Nevermore for some reason, but it was Doom. And Doom is more than enough to pick off that Earthshaker. 
So I think this is four heroes now bottom lane. They are easily going to push this tower. It will take a, uh, a lot to prevent this from dying, and down it goes. Venomancer is just, uh, I'm not sure if she can afford to farm these or not. She's trying. She's hurting them in any event. But uh, now we see the, the spiderites from the broodling coming in. And Lucifer is here. We see Silibear very nearby as well, but again, only two Sentinel heroes in the woods. And most of the Scourge team, four Scourge heroes, still bottom. I'm not sure where their other hero is. Oh, there he is. Morphling farming, of course, all the way over there. So the Scourge, they do have some very strong ability to push with Spiderites and the and Eidolons. However, the Sentinels Nevermore can counter that. The Firefly can also counter that with a very strong AoE damage, and to a lesser extent, the Earthshaker. Let me just uh, remind you all of the tower kill count. So these two towers combined with this tower. So three tower Sentinels killed three towers, whereas the Scourge has also killed three towers. So even on the tower kill count, except well, yeah, I'm just going to call it even. One of the all right, we see Nevermore is bottom lane along with a gaggle of allies. He has his Venomancer here, he has his Bat Rider here, and he has the Earthshaker, I think, there in the back, yeah. The only one who is not there is the Syllabare, who is double damage top ring. There is, they are not going to run to anyone until they hit the tower, and we may see a battle at the tower, but until then, it is going to be a slow push. Actually, there's the, the Broodmother, so I'm not sure if I missed her, but... There is a Broodmother. She has an Ogre Axe. She has not yet finished her BKB. 21 minutes in. I think I would have liked to have seen a BKB now. I, it, but I mean, or at least maybe the the, um, the Mithril Hammer of it. So Earthshaker popping down a Fissure just to damage these Spiderites before they get out of control. And the Venomancer Ward just tanking because why not? Something has to. So this, we're going to see a Bat Rider. Is we want to see if he chooses to blink initiate on anyone. I definitely think he could, because there is not yet this enigma here. Once this enigma is here, they are going to have a hard time because he could get off a very nice ultimate. We will see. Here is the enigma. The bat rider has come in. The earthshaker's fissure is down, so the black hole cannot be interrupted by fisher since it's on cooldown now. So this Bat Rider is being killed by the Broodmother. The Raze is going off. Come on with some right clicks. Take down the Enigma, the ultimate from the Earthshaker. The Venom, or excuse me, the Ventral Spirit, very low health. The Broodmother, very low health. Some more Fissures going off from the Earthshaker. This battle is still ongoing. They do have a... Uh, I like... So the Sentinel pushes the tower. They're doing a lot of damage to this Morphling who is waveforming away. And Morphling has his BKB, he just pops a little bit too late there. And the Sentinel, we will see if they continue to push. They they have the Bat Rider back in the action. He is their initiator. And they choose to back off to defend this tower. Nevermore. Not not to defend the tower so much as to get the farm. So I do like a I feel that I said Scourge has some strong heroes, but one thing they are sort of lacking in is initiation. I feel that they are the Sentinel has the superior initiation, which is always a very large factor in team fights. I mean, the Scourge they do have the the Enigma, which is good, but without a Blink Dagger or a BKB, he is not as strong as the ability of the Bat Rider. I do not think. Uh, I'm not sure if Bat Riders picked up much health yet. Let me check. Um, he has the urn and he has a vitality booster. He has not finished up any sort of boots yet, just the regular boots. So he has a fair amount of health, but I guess he has enough health. But not a ridiculous amount, just enough. So the Nevermore picking off a tower kill, and I think that's his, at least his second tower kill. I know he killed this tower, so he is very wealthy from the tower kills. He has himself a Yasha and an Ultimate Orb, so inches away from finishing a mint style if he chooses. The Roshan is going down quite handily. So they take out the Roshan, no problem. And they do give it to the Morphling, so I think that was good for the Scourge. They have fallen behind a little bit in towers. They lost these couple of towers, they've lost five towers total. So they're down a couple towers, so picking up a Roshan helps even that out a little bit. We see Morphling doing some waveform farming of the Venomancer going to get away. We do have Earthshaker here. The Venomancer has been swapped, and she has been killed. 
The Earthshaker is doomed, however, I, I'm perhaps not the best use of doom. We have the Batrider blinking in to initiate on this doom, who is being a little bit too aggressive, I think. And we will see the, the Morphling is waveforming out. The Nevermore gets up an ult, which hits thin air, more or less. He does this as Manta style, if he can ever just sort of sit down and click it and get in the right click mode. The Morphling is waveform an aggressive waveform in to try and kill the Syllabare, but then he replicates out. So he was just doing a little bit of damage. This uh, Doom, who is six stacks on him, is very screwed. The, the Ventral Spear coming in too late. She tried to support him, but just bees. That's uh, too little too late support here. That's uh, one of the main ways you can screw up as a support hero is when you come in too late, when your ally is already dead and all you do is die yourself. That is not the way to be playing a support hero. Syllabare is a maniac with absolutely no items at all. Actually, I take that back. He has a radiance on his spirit bear. How did I not notice the radiance on the spirit bear? It took him a while to fire up, but he does in fact have a radiant bear. That bear is so shiny. He is... Um, what's a shiny bear? I don't even know. He's like Ursa Major. I'll just call him Ursa Major since he's so shiny. He was Ursa Minor, now he's Ursa... So we see a, a kill down there. However, I'm just up here because I think that this... Now his blink dagger is on cooldown. He is using. He is pulling back this. Okay, he's just gonna let him stand there, but the the venomancer is slowing him down with some right clicks enough to kill him. I missed the uh, the the brew mother picking up a kill on the bottom lane just sort of before that though, which I apologize, but I'm not perfect. That's a well. There are a few perfect. I don't know. If there's Yaf. It's even perfect wouldn't even be good. I mean, come on, Yaf. This game wouldn't be good enough. I'd still be missing kills. Um. So, the, I don't know, it's, I said that I like Scourge's position, but uh, as the game goes on, I'm beginning to doubt it, even though I thought that the longer the game goes on, the stronger I've been feeling. The, the Nevermore farmed up fairly well, this Morphling has a DKB, but he really needs one more item, but getting that easy kill there will probably help him. Um, they are calling for a gank on the... The Syllabair wants the Batrider to help him gank someone, the Lucy probably. Well, there's the Lucifer. We'll see if they do anything. Bat says cooldown. Two seconds it's off cooldown now. Um, they are going for the Morphling, perhaps. The Morphling just gets out of there with his replicate, though. That is not going to work. We see, meanwhile, bottom lane, Nevermore almost gets killed by this uh, Broodmother who's farming. She finally has... The, okay. Now that Broodmother has the BKB, I think that they should be fairly well set for their next encounter. The game is very even, really. It really depends on how the initiation goes. One huge wild card is Enigma's ultimate, how effective it will be, or how effective it won't be. Whichever way it goes could swing the next major team fight either way. It's a very even game, I think. Doom almost has level 3 as ultimate. If you can get that for the next team fight, that'll be pretty clutch. Do not super clutch. Level 2 Doom is really almost as good as level 3 Doom, but the extra damage is pretty handy. So, things, I don't, I'm not sure if, uh, if Sentinel, if I were them, I might think about trying to be a bit more aggressive with some pushing, because they are, they are up against a very strong late game lineup, whereas I think they're a bit weaker late game. They do have Scylla Bear, who can be ridiculously good late game. I mean, I've I've never even seen a Scylla Bear, like, perfect item Scylla Bear. I don't even want to think about how ridiculous it would be and how much gold it would cost, but it could be ridiculously effective. But really, the problem with Scylla Bear is his bear can become ridiculously stacked hypothetically just if you were somehow get all of those items. But Scylla Bear is just not that good at farming, so it doesn't really happen. So, kind of fail raises from Nevermore. He could have done that a bit more efficiently, but whatevs. The right clicks are enough to finish the job. So this Lucy has, um, okay, so he has the centaur. I can tell you he ate a centaur just because he has the endurance that we're on, which means that he's that very short, a very short stun, which can be, might be a bit of fact. We might be able to get it if the bat rider tries to blink in and lasso one of his allies. He might be able to, like, bam, stun you. We'll see if he can pull that off. This Morphling is taking some right clicks from the Nevermore, who has a Blade of Alacrity in addition to his mana style, so he does pretty good right clicking. 
And so we see the entire Sentinel team is top lane. The Scourge is sort of scattered around in sort of strange positions. I'm not sure what they're doing. They're really out of position here. So Nevermore is going for the tower kill. The Scylla Bear is just sort of hanging around looking like a scary bear. I have no sorry. That was what am I smoking? That was the replicated Scylla Bear. The real one is much larger and much uglier in fact. So the Sentinel does pick this tower. Like I said, they really need to think about doing some pushing because they should be a little bit afraid of letting the Scourge take this to the late game just because every one of their heroes really has something for the late game. The Morphling and the Broodmother just being so powerful with their right clicks. The Enigma contributing a lot with his ultimate. The, the Venge contributing with her Command Aura as well as her Howls of Terror and her swaps and her stuns. And the Lucy contributing by being able to silence to uh, really either to nullify potentially Venomancer's ultimate or something else depending on just where you know people are positioned so very even game uh, the skirt the sentinel is in a sort of precarious position they're they're in the position where they need to win the game sort of soon if they start to lose their outer towers and start to let the game go on they're in trouble I think right now it is even but uh, it's slowly, slowly eking more and more towards the Scourge, which is what I thought for a long time, so the Scourge's late game is the stronger late game. But we shall see. Sentinel has, they have used their, their Bat Riders initiating power. They've used the advantage of that to initiate some team fights at towers that the enemy team is, they've been sort of afraid to push, so they lost the towers. We will see, but sooner or later, Sentinel is going to they're going to need to man up and go for a, a Rax push, I think. I'm not sure if they're going to be too cowardly. So Bowrider's finished off his um, his Vanguard. So even more durable Bowrider. And the Earth... Oh, Earthshaker has a Blink Dagger. I'm not sure when he picked that up, but he does, in fact, have a Blink Dagger. I'm not sure if that was just right this instant, but the Blink Dagger is up. So now is the time. They have a Blink Dagger Earthshaker. I'm not sure if waiting what they could wait for. Oh no. Nevermore is a little out of position. However, Earthshaker blinks in health. Nevermore ultimate does go off. They pick off one kill on the Broodmother, which is huge. With the Broodmother down, they can really afford to push. Broodmother, I'm not sure if she has enough gold to push or not. I cannot tell if she can push or if she can buy back or not. I assume no. So we see Nevermore is at low health. However, he has his, wow, he has the Diffusal Blade. And we'll see if he uses that effectively or not. I don't know. Oftentimes we see him going for more of a... Um, often the Helm of the Dominator can be a bit stronger in the late game. But we see this Morphling out of position. He does have the Aegis. Maybe he just wanted to pop that. But we will see if he dies again because he is... Oh, fantastic ultimate from the Enigma. It's interrupted a little bit too late, however, the, the Nevermore is outside it and right clicks him to death. He picked off the Nevermore, and this is absolutely what Sentinel needed. I think the Blink Dagger from the Earthshaker was huge, and the good game is called, and wow, that was a very unexpected turnaround. I did not think that Sentinel were in that position, but when I saw the Blink Dagger on the Earthshaker, I knew that they were in the position to push. The Broodmother was caught out of position, which sort of cascaded uh, the... The Enigma had a good alt, which would have been much better if her Broodmother was alive, but really Broodmother being caught out of position was the, was the GG, and it was just so sudden. And that's one of the strange things about Dota is it can end so quickly. I did, I thought that Scourge, they were still in it. They just had to hang on, defending the tower, but really being caught out of position, that was spelt disaster for them. And this is Keith APC, and that was a bit sudden. I, I almost wish it had gone on a bit longer, but there you have it. It was a good game over and out. Have a nice day.